All right, and welcome back. Uh, for today's lesson, we're looking at the title of this as Industrialism Spreads. So here's our objectives and uh, standards for this lesson. Uh, explain industrialization in the United States and to analyze the growth and spread of industry across Europe and the world. And just take a look at the standards, if you would, please. Okay, vocabulary preview, uh, stock and corporation. I'm sure many of you have probably seen these words before, even know what these words mean, uh, but these are the vocab words for this lesson. Think about this, how does industry impact different cultures? Obviously industry can have a positive or negative impact on culture, but how does it, um, you know, how, how does it impact cultures? Uh, does it make them better? Does it make them worse? Um, we're gonna look at that um, throughout this lesson as well and uh, within the next couple of classes as well. So our central question, how did industry spread around the world? All right, so industry comes to the US. So remember uh, before break, we talked about how Great Britain had some natural resources that are required um, to start industrialization and they had the population growth um, and some other things needed to have industry start in their country. Well, the United States also has these things and they have the same resources. They have a population growth, they have the natural resources, they have the uh, the uh, wealth or the uh, entrepreneurs that are looking to do it. So all those things are also going on in the U.S. as well. Now, I don't know how much you remember from maybe U.S. history class, other classes, but the War of 1812 was between the United States and Great Britain. And after the uh, during the War of 1812, excuse me, um, the United States needed to learn how to create its own goods because Great Britain had put a blockade against uh, the United States. So the, U the U.S. had to learn to make its own goods. <laughs> So just like Great Britain, the textile industry started the revolution in the United States as well. However, Great Britain would not allow uh, those key people uh, to industrialization to leave the country, such as engineers or mechanics or toolmakers. So those people were not allowed to leave Great Britain and take these ideas elsewhere. However, some of them were able to slip out and get those ideas out to the rest of the world. So, for example, Samuel Slater came to the United States in 1789, his picture is down there at the bottom, uh, and he brought with him designs for a spinning machine from Great Britain. Now, Moses Brown uh, met with Sam Slater and used and took um, Sam Slater's ideas for the machine and put that in his first factory in the United States with Slater's machine. So Lowell transforms industry. Francis Cabot Lowell uh, was someone else involved in the uh, industrialization of the United States, and he and others helped change the textile industry in Massachusetts. So instead of just using um, a machine for one part of making cloth, they used machines for every part of cloth manufacturing. Okay, So they opened other centers in other towns and uh, one of these one of these towns was named after Lowell uh, after he died so Lowell Massachusetts became a center for manufacturing especially textile manufacturing okay so Lowell became an example of manufacturing for the world and it also provided work opportunities to women um, women went to go work in these factories especially younger women uh, for independence and they were offered high wages um, it was you know laboring work at times um, and they were kept under a very strict um, watch and, you know, and weren't allowed to do a lot of different things. But uh, here's a picture of a woman working here in one of the Lowell factories. And then this here is one of the Lowell company mills um, that you can see. And these girls would live here and work here and things like that, I presume. And uh, But again, they were kept under a very careful watch uh, and weren't, didn't have too much freedom. But again, it offered them some independence and higher wages. So moving ahead a little bit, um, industry expanded in the United States after the Civil War. The Civil War takes place around 1860s in the United States, and we'll be talking about that um, in the coming weeks as well. Um, but after the Civil War, new inventions and a new increase in city populations uh, allowed for industry to continue to grow. Railroads also allowed for industry to expand and grow across the country. Remember, we talked about how in Great Britain, railroads uh, allowed for industrial growth. So railroads in the United States will also allow for industry to expand as well. So by the late 1800s, uh, industry was definitely on the rise in the country. So large businesses need large amounts of money to be successful. It's still true today, right? So to achieve this goal, entrepreneurs sold stocks or rights of ownership to a company. 
Um, so once you bought a stock, you became part of this corporation. Now, a corporation is a business with stockholders who share the profits, but they're not responsible for the debts of the company. So they get to reap the benefits, so to speak, and don't have to really pay for any type of negative stuff that happens, okay? Um, so that's what stocks are. Again, stocks are rights of ownership to a company or a corporation. And a corporation is just the business with the stockholders in it who share the profits. Two of the most well-known um, businessmen of this time period are John D. Rockefeller, who uh, owns Standard Oil, and Andrew Carnegie, or Andrew Carnegie, however you want to pronounce it, I've heard it both ways, uh, who was in charge of Carnegie Steel Company. And both these men were big industrial giants uh, at the in the in the late 1800s in the United States. Now, um, a lot of people will say a lot of the things they did to their workers and how they got ahead in life was a little corrupt and maybe not the best, you know, honest way of doing things. But either way, both of these men were very key to the Industrial Revolution in the United States, especially in the later half of the 1800s. And there are others too, but these are one of the two uh, big names that stick out when you think about the Industrial Revolution in the United States. All right, going back over across the ocean to Europe, um, other European countries were a little slower to industrialize. The first European country to follow in Great Britain's industrial ways was Belgium. Um, William Cockerill, uh, if I'm saying that correctly, uh, he was a carpenter from Britain who helped Belgium industrialize with plans of a spinning mill and other engineers from Great Britain. So again, these people are leaving Great Britain and going to other countries and taking these plans and ideas from Great Britain to these other countries. And these countries are then learning from these plans and these ideas. Germany also learned to industrialize from uh, British equipment and engineers. Um, they also sent their children to school in England to learn about industrial management, which I thought was kind of neat. I never knew that. That was so I actually learned something. Um, and places such as Bohemia, Italy, France, and Russia also picked up on uh, industry fairly easy. However, some other countries like Austria, Hungary, and Spain uh, did struggle with industry a little bit. But for the most part, most countries in Europe were able to industrialize pretty quickly and easily. So how does industry impact the world? Well, industry created a bigger gap between wealthy countries and poor countries. Okay, Wealthier countries, and we're going to see this in the next couple of weeks, are going to use poorer countries for their resources and other things. Okay, And this is going to lead to something called imperialism. Um, and maybe you've heard of that before. Again, I'm not quite sure. But this is going to lead to the next type of topic we're going to talk about uh, in class as well. However, industrialization wasn't always bad. It also helped improve certain aspects of people and their lives. Okay, let's just wrap it up here. Uh, the United States industrialized and helped build large corporations. Remember, we talked about Lowell, uh, Massachusetts being a key factor and a key place uh, in, in the industrialization in the United States. And uh, stock and corporations like uh, John Rockefeller and Andrew Carnegie. Uh, helped create this whole concept of corporations and things like that. And European nations are also going to learn to industrialize from Great Britain. They're going to uh, kind of borrow some of their ideas and some of their plans to industrialize their own countries. And finally, industry can impact the world in many different aspects. It can have positive uh, effects and it can also have negative effects. And we'll also discuss that later in live class as well. All right, well, that's all I have for this lesson. So just be sure to answer the questions and make sure you submit them. And I will see you later.